So my name is Anna Galletly and we are going to be doing unit 13 now uh, for the AMP lab and we're going to start with the spinal cord and spinal nerves and then move on to the cranial nerves and also reflexes eventually. All right, let's start with the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is going to begin at your um, foramen magnum. All right, so that's all the way up between your C1 and occipital. All right, and then it's going to continue going all the way down. And then you're going to get down to about, um, let's see if that's T12, this is L1, and this is L2. Okay, so you're down at your lumbar vertebrae. And what you're going to notice is this section right here where there's this kind of pointy tip. It looks like a cone, and so we call it the conus medullaris. And this is where the spinal cord ends in most people. It can end up here or it can be down here. It kind of depends on how tall or short you are. The average is around L1. And then you will see all of these spinal nerves coming down, and they're coming out through here and through here, and then they're coming down here. This section right here is called the cauda equina, which I think I have on another slide as well. All right, and it's called, so this means tail, and this means horse. So to some old anatomy dude, it looked like a horse's tail. Then this thing right here, which is really hard to see, there's a thin strand. It almost looks like a single thread of spider web. And this is an extinction of pia matter, and it's called the filum terminale. And this anchors that spinal cord so it doesn't bounce up and down and you know shear off your spinal nerves. All right, so now we can look a little bit more closely at some of these structures. So you can see very nicely the cauda equina over on this side and how the spinal nerves are going out through the holes and down through the sacral hiatus. All right, um, so we talked about the filum terminale, preventing it from uh, bouncing up and down. We also have these strands over here called denticulate oligaments, and those basically anchor it to the walls on either side, and that prevents it from slapping from side to side. So we've got both of those structures made out of pia matter for anchoring it, and then of course over here you've got the cauda equina was just the extension of the spinal nerves. All right, so now we can look at the models that we're gonna be using, and you can see I've got them as a close-up and a, I don't know how to call that, far away view of the entire model. So right over here, so if we're at this side, you can see that that is where the frame and, no, excuse me, that's wrong. Um, let me get the color back. Um, if you're watching the bone, it's gonna kinda come like this and this, if you had it fully there. And so right there, you can see the medulla oblongata of your brainstem. And it's a little bit thicker, which is how you know it's the medulla oblongata. And then right there is your spinal cord, all right? And then this would be your C1 vertebra. And you can see it goes all the way down, and then you can see the strands of the spinal nerves coming out. And you'll remember that those go out through the intervertebral foramina. Okay, now we're gonna continue to come down. Okay, and you can see your ribs. So this is rib 12, rib 11, okay? So then right about here is where your vert T12 would be. Um, <clears throat> and then this right here would be where your L1 vertebra is, okay? So that's an L and that's a one, okay? And then you can see the conus medullaris. So we'll abbreviate that CM. And then the cauda equina CE. So now let's move over here where we can do a blow up. So again, you have your rib 12. That right there is your T12 vertebra. And then this is going to be your L1 vertebra, okay? And then you can see the conus medullaris, and you can see the strands of the cauda equina and how it creates those spinal nerves that are gonna go out through the various foramina. Now I'm gonna switch colors so that I can highlight better that filum terminale, okay? So that's the filum terminale. 
And you'll notice this little number here. Okay, that's basically the number on the film terminale. And I also want you to notice how the film terminale is anchoring to the cossacks. Okay, next slide. All right, so now we're going to look at this cross section of the spinal cord. And I'm going to try not to write over too much of it. So you can see your white matter with the myelinated fibers all in here. And then the gray matter right here of your, um, of your gray matter, which is unmyelinated. And then the anterior horn and the posterior horn. And what I do is I visualize a butterfly. So there's the little horns of the butterfly. And this is the shoulder of the butterfly. So the shoulders at the top. So that helps me think of anterior, the front. And then the tips, if you look at a butterfly's wings, they're pointy at the bottom. And so for me, the bottom and the posterior kind of go together. And that helps me remember which horn is anterior versus which horn is posterior. Now, with both of these horns, you absolutely must associate what is in them. So posterior horn, sensory axons, number one thing, plus interneurons. Anterior horn, motor, neuron, cell bodies, all right? And there will be some interneurons as well, there as well, okay? Now, <clears throat> looking at these structures, you come in, see coming out of that posterior horn, the dorsal root, which is going to come up here into a swelling called the dorsal root ganglion. In the dorsal root ganglion, what you must know is that you've got the sensory cell bodies, okay? And that in the dorsal root, you have just sensory axons. Now, coming out of the anterior horn, I have the ventral roots up in here. And then those are going to merge together. And what you need to know about that, motor neurons. So you absolutely must remember that ventral and motor go together and dorsal and sensory go together. And then these two merge to form the spinal nerve. Right here, ugh, let me get some room in here. That is where your inner vertebral, interver, inter, ver, ugh, messing that up, vertebral foramen is located. So this is going through that hole in the bone right there. And then this will become the different peripheral nerves as it begins to branch off and go into different directions. We'll talk more about that in a little bit when we get to these Remy communicantes and stuff. Okay, so you've got those structures. Now, remember we're protecting the brain and the spinal cord in meninges. We've got three. You've got the dural sheath, which is also called the dural matter, but we call it a sheath with the spinal cord often because it looks like a sock or a sheath surrounding it. This delicate layer in the middle is the arachnoid matter. And then right in here, there's a space called the subarachnoid space. And that is where you're gonna find your cerebral spinal fluid. All right, and then clinging to the surface of the spinal cord is going to be the pia matter. All right, we'll move on now. All right, so let's look at this within the bone. So you've got right here your spinous process, so you know that's posterior. You've got the body of your vertebra, so you know that that's anterior. I can see white matter here. I can see gray matter here. I see a curve here and a point here. So I know that this is my anterior horn, and I know that that is my posterior horn. And I know that this is going to be then sensory, and this is going to be motor, okay? Now coming out of this, this is my dorsal root here and here, okay? I see this swelling, which is the dorsal root ganglion, which has my cell bodies for sensory neurons, okay? And then I can see the ventral root right here coming together. And then where these two things come together, that is my spinal nerve going through the intervertebral foramen and then it eventually branches out, okay? Now, one more, other, one more other, oh, that was an awful phrase. <clears throat> one more thing to look at, well, actually a few more things. We have the epidural space and you'll notice that it's filled with fat. That is where you inject epidural anesthetic, okay? Now, <clears throat> and here, you see these strands? Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like the yellow, okay? Let's just do this. You see these strands right in here? That's the strands associated with the arachnoid matter. So this whole space is filled right in here, here, 
here with cerebral spinal fluid. And then right there is your central canal, which is a canal going down the center of your spinal cord that's also filled with cerebral spinal fluid. All right, moving on. All right, let's start talking about the structure of those nerves that are coming out. Um, so we'll do a few of these slides and then you'll go on to the next slideshow to look at the spinal nerves in particular. First of all, we've got definitions. You have a nerve versus a tract. Really important that you know the difference. They're basically the same thing except for location. And then you've got cranial nerves versus spinal nerves. Same thing, but cranial nerves sprout from the brain, spinal nerves sprout from the spinal cord, okay? Now we're gonna look over here at the structure of a nerve. First of all, you've got a neurovascular bundle. And I want you to look at this word, epineurium. That should sound um, similar, all right? You saw this very similar stuff with um, the muscular system, except for we called it epimecium, okay? So this bundle around the outside is like you're taking a thick fabric of fibrous connective tissue and you're wrapping it around this entire structure, and then we call that a neurovascular bundle. So neuro for neuron, vascular for blood vessels. So you will see over here an artery and a vein, okay? Or it could be an arteriovenule depending on the size of it, okay? Then what you're going to see are these fascicles, okay? So this whole thing, whole thing is a fascicle. It's a big bundle of fibers and it's going to be wrapped in perineurium, which should be familiar to you from the muscular system, okay? So that whole thing. Now within the fascicle, I have individual tubes. And right here, you're gonna see this tube. Let me switch to my highlighter. So I see this stuff on the outside. That's gonna be the endoneurium. So that is going to be connective tissue, a thin, delicate layer. Then if you have a myelinated fiber, you'll see the myelin sheath. And then inside that, the teeny tiny strand of axon, okay? You could also have one of these where you have endoneurium and just axon and no myelin sheath if it's an unmyelinated fiber in a mixed nerve, okay? All right, looking at a slide, what you see is back over in here, the outline of the epineurium. So this would be a neurovascular bundle, except I'm not seeing any arteries or veins at the moment. So not every single nerve is a neurovascular bundle. Sometimes it's just neural, okay? And then I've got these big bundles here, here, here. Those are my fascicles, okay? And then you can see wrapped around them, this would be representing the areas of the endoneurium. And of course, it's at too low of a magnification to go any deeper than that. All right, now we're gonna look at this last slide in this section, which is showing you myelinated fibers a little bit more close up. And what you will see, oops, is the perineurium over here, okay? And then you see these white globs, all right? Those are the Schwann cells that form the myelin sheath. And then in the center, I have the axons. And then it's a little bit harder to tell, but you've got these areas right here. Let me change color so you can see it. This would be where the endoneurium is located right here. And then this would be the myelin sheath or the Schwann cell. And then that would be the axon in the center. Okay, so that ends part A of the uh, unit three lecture series. Part B will go over the spinal nerves.